Hello, hello, hello. In this worked example, we're going to uh, treat an example having to do with the uniform circular motion. The example is called zip car on a circular track. And uh, our driver, Wendy, uh, rents a uh, zip car and she goes for a drive around a uh, circular track. The track has a radius of 10, meter, 10 meters. Uh, unfortunately, the zip car has an oil leak and it's dripping oil. Uh, at a rate of one drop per second. And these red circles represent the oil spots that are formed as the uh, car drives around the track. And uh, the question is, what is Wendy's, given this information, uh, can we deduce what Wendy's average velocity is uh, between the time when she's located at point A and when she's at point B? And we'll assume that she's traveling around the track in a clockwise direction. Well, to answer this, we have to remember uh, what the definition of average velocity is. And average velocity, it's a vector quantity. Uh, that's just by definition, the ratio of the change in position or the displacement, the ratio of that uh, vector quantity uh, to the amount of time interval between when the motion starts and when it ends, and we call that time interval delta t. So that's the definition of average velocity. So all we've got to do is evaluate uh, both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, let's start with the numerator. The change in position, by definition, the change in position delta r is just uh, the difference between the final position, which is a position when the uh, zip car is at point b, minus the initial position, its position vector when it is located at point A. And if we look uh, at our um, drawing here, we can see that these two vector quantities, RA is this vector here, and RB is this vector here. And delta R, by definition, is a vector that connects the two tips of the arrows. So that last line that I drew is this quantity delta r. OK, that's a little bit neater there. OK, so rb and ra are clearly vectors of length 10 meters, because uh, that's the radius of the circle. rb points in, so its length is 10 meters, and its direction is in the plus i hat direction. Uh, and then I have a minus sign here. That's this minus sign here. And then RA, also of length 10 meters, uh, RA points in the j-hat direction. So that is my expression for delta R. Now, what about delta T? Well, delta T is the time interval between when the zip car is at points A and B. And uh, we... To get that time interval, we just need to count the dots because we know the dots are one second apart. That's one, two, three, four. So delta T is clearly four seconds. So the average velocity of the zip car between when it is at point A and point B is I have 10 meters, just plugging into the definition of average velocity. The numerator is delta r, which we just said is that. And I need to divide by 4 seconds. That's delta t. And so what we get is 2.5 meters per second i hat minus 2.5 meters per second j hat. And if we want to know what this vector looks like when we plot it graphically, well, it's going to point in the same direction as delta r. It's going to be pointing uh, down and to the left, uh, sort of at a 45 degree angle below horizontal. So now let's suppose we're asked what is Wendy's average speed during the time interval between uh, when she is at point A and when she's at point B. Well, we just have to recall the definition of average speed. Average speed is, by definition, just the distance traveled divided by the time interval over which that distance is traveled. 
so in this case, the distance traveled is one quarter of a circle between a point A and B. That's a quarter of a circle. So the distance is one quarter times the circumference of the circle, which is two pi times 10 meters, because the circumference of a circle is two pi times the radius. So that that's the distance traveled. And then the time interval we said is four seconds. So uh, we're, ju we're just about done. I just have to do some simple math. So a quarter uh, times two is a half, and then you divide a half by, um, by four, and you get an eighth, and then you multiply an eighth uh, by 10, and you get 1.25, and then there's a factor of pi meters per second. Uh, so her speed is just a scalar quantity, and her average speed is 1.25 times pi meters per second. And finally, we can ask, what is Wendy's instantaneous velocity when she is at position A? And uh, remembering the definition of instantaneous velocity, an instantaneous velocity, you can think of it instantaneous. That's a word I have trouble sp spelling. Instantaneous velocity is sort of by definition, uh, it's, you can think of it as a speed plus a direction. I'll say what I mean by that. So uh, when Wendy is at point A and she's traveling clockwise around the circle, she's clearly traveling. Her instantaneous velocity uh, is tangent to the, uh, to the path. So her instantaneous velocity is clearly directed in the i-hat direction. And then uh, to get the velocity v sub a, uh, we just need to multiply that uh, unit vector in that direction by her speed, which we just said is 1.5 pi meters per second in the i-hat direction. So that is Wendy's instantaneous velocity when she is located at point A at the beginning of her trip. And of course, at the end of her trip, when she's at point B, her instantaneous velocity is of uh, the same magnitude, but now it is pointed in the minus j hat direction. So that's it for this worked example. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.